Recently I scrolled through a website and I saw this plus on the right corner and I tapped on it and then a window popped up with the different chapters of the website where you can jump directly to there. And this is what we're doing today. Welcome back to another episode of Buttersmooth Motion Graphics. So I'm already here in the Fusion page and I have here the reference video in my left viewer so we can recreate this step by step. So first we need here this background and this is a stock background here from DaVinci Resolve. So I just drag and drop this here and I simply adjust the colors as I want it to have. So the first thing we're gonna do is here we create this circle here. But we need to do it with a rectangle mass because it gets bigger to a rectangle. So it only looks like a circle down here. So and for that we select here the rectangle mask. We select a background. Then plug the rectangle to the background and the background here to this square. This creates a merge node. So we have our background here. Then select the rectangle. First, we need to have a perfect square to make here this circle. Recently, I've made a video with five fusion tips you probably didn't know. And in this video, I show you exactly how you can create the perfect square. I won't go too much into detail here. I make it real quick. So go here to the width, right click, click on expression. And here I connect it with the height and type in spacebar, multiply spacebar, 9 divided by 16, press enter. And like so, I have a perfect square. So when I increase here the corner radius, I have the perfect circle. If you want to know how this exactly works, make sure to check out the other video. Then by hovering over this edge, I can make the circle smaller and here in the middle, I can just place it right here. In the description down below, there is a link where you can download here the reference video so you can adjust it exactly as I do here. Now just change the color and here the alpha channel until you're happy with the result. Like that, we have our circle. Now we search here the frame when it pops up. This is here on frame 25. So I go here to the rectangle make a keyframe here on the corner radius because when we make the square, we need to adjust the corner radius. We need to have here a keyframe on the height because we need to change the height as well. And we need a keyframe here on center point. Then we go further, the animation goes here until frame 35, so only 10 frames. And here on this frame, we make it bigger, we decrease the corner radius, and we adjust the position. And this is very useful here with the reference video. So we can place it exactly like it is here. So once you've done that, go further right to the frame before it gets smaller again. So this is here on frame 135. Here also create a keyframe on these three values without changing anything. So that means from frame 35 to 135, it stays exactly like that. And then here, the next 10 frames, it gets back to this size. With no adjustments, create here all these three keyframes. Go back to the very first one, then copy here the first value over, press enter, go back to frame 25, copy the next one, go over, press enter, back, until you've copied every single value over there. So like that, we created every keyframe here, it gets bigger, then it stays like that, and here it gets small again. So this is everything for the circle animation. Now we want to have here this outline that we have around here. So for that, just select here all these three nodes, copy them over as they are, like that. Then simply select here the rectangle mask, disable the solid, and increase the border width. So we have only here the outline. To make it stand a little bit more out, go to the background, turn the alpha all the way up to one and just make this color slightly darker like that. And you see, it's that easy to create a thin outline here around this animation. The next step is here to create this little plus icon. And when you take a closer look, when the animation goes up, it flips to a cross. For that, we once again need a background and we need a rectangle mask. Plug it in and plug the background here to the square. This creates a merge node. 
and to position here this mask just go here to a frame where your small circle is here then just copy here the values of this little circle over here to your new mask and then it's exactly in the center and now we just need to increase here the width and the height and give the corner radius all the way up to one and then select once again here a color you want to have maybe this lighter gray here and to make the other one we just copy here these two over deconnect here the merge node because later we're gonna animate here the cross for that we need a multi-merge here plug them both in and then plug the multi-merge into the merge then select here the second rectangle and here on angle just type in 90 like that we have this little plus and now the plus goes up to this corner right there so this is the next animation we need to do for that we once again go here to frame 25 where the animation starts we click on the rectangle and we need a keyframe on center X and Y because we adjust the position and the angle. Do the same thing here on the second rectangle mask. Then we go to frame 35. And now it's pretty easy with our preview here to adjust this right. So we go up here with the X position until here. And we're gonna adjust the angle to 45. So that means in this 10 frames it flips up like that. And now you can copy here the Y value over here to the first rectangle mask, copy it over, press enter so it's already up there and then here on angle minus 45. So we have that cross. So in this 10 frames they're gonna flip up like that. And now it's up to you how you want it to have. When you look here at this plus it just flips up like that and here in the other animation I've made them turn against each other so when you look they flip towards each other and then we go up here it's up to you which one you want to have if you want to have here just the flip animation you can leave it like that if you want to have it the other way go here to frame 35 where the animation ends go here to rectangle and type in the first one in 45 and in the second one minus 45 so they flip against each other. It's up to you which one you want to have. Then here we do the same thing like before. We go to frame 135, keyframe, center X and Y and angle on both of them. And here on 145, create a keyframe on both of them. Then go to frame 25 and copy all the values over to 145. So once you've copied everything over, we've got this very smooth animation here. We just need to add the text. To add the text, I go to any frame here where the square is in its full size. Then I select here the text node, plug it into the merge. So I have here my text visible. Then you can type in whatever you want. I thought about my different links I have. And you can do all of them in just one single text node. Make sure they are left aligned. That then I want to have it way smaller, but we increase here the line spacing like that. And here once again, adjust the color as you want it to have. Like that we have our text here that matches here inside of this square. But you see, we need to animate it here so it comes in like that. And I simply did it with a rectangle mask. So I select it here and plug it into the alpha channel here of the merge node. So we have here our text and here we have the mask input of, of the merge node. So you can see everything that's inside this mask is visible. And like that we can make the text here appear like that. I simply turned here this rectangle mask. So when I move over this box, the text appears. And to make it look way smoother, go here to soft edge and simply increase the soft edge. So when we hover over, it goes smooth in like that, one by another. Here it's up to you how much delay you want to have between each word. Simply rotate here the mask until you're happy. So and for the keyframes, you can see here on the left viewer, here it already starts here to appear. So we set a keyframe on frame 32, where the mask is around here and the text is fully visible already here on frame 39. So we go over here until the text is fully visible 
and we do the same thing at the end. Here when it starts to get smaller on frame 130 we create a keyframe, go around 8 frames further and we let it disappear to this side here. Go through your timeline and check if it looks okay but in my opinion this looks very good like that. So when you go back to the edit page and we watch this animation it simply looks like that. It pops up, all the words come in and it pops back down. And now we need to make it bother smooth. So for that we open up here our splines, enable here all the rectangle masks that we have, click here on zoom to fit so everything is visible, then press command or control A to select everything and then press F like fusion and not S like splines because we want to have here a straight line. Then press T to open up here this menu and on ease in increase it to around 85, somewhere around here. So every animation starts very fast and then it goes very slow. So this makes this butter smooth animation. So maybe you've noticed everything that's behind this animation is blurred out. So the animation is better visible here on this little circle and when it gets bigger here everything is blurred out. And to do this we make here a bit more space and here at the beginning with here your background selected hit shift and spacebar type in Gaussian blur press enter. But now you see your whole background is blurry and not just here on the mask. For that simply select here the output of your very first rectangle mask and just plug it into your Gaussian blur. And like that the Gaussian blur has exactly the same mask like here the background with all the keyframes everything. So you can see we have it here only on, on the circle and when it gets bigger it's perfectly sized here with the animation. And like always we want to have motion blur here in this animation. So select every rectangle mask, go to settings, enable motion blur and here in my opinion it looks very good when we put here the shutter angle to around 100 that we don't have too much motion blur inside it. And now simply do this with every rectangle mask, motion blur, quality all the way up, shutter angle 100. Once you've done that you should have an animation like that. With that said have fun creating and see you in the next one.